Hello, my beautiful family. Okay, so this is part two of the Dijon mustard that we started yesterday. This is where we're going to do our processing and our canning. So we'll finish this up. In here, you'll find that this sat for 24 hours. So now it's nice and thick. All the seeds have absorbed all the liquid. And it's just as you see, it, it's still kind of liquidy, but pretty much really thick. So from here, we take this to a blender and we're going to puree this up really, really good. As smooth as we can possibly get. All I have actually is this blender. So if you have something better, like a Vitamix or whatever that can get it better than I can, then by all means use what you've got. This is all I have. So I'm going to take this here and I'm going to puree this up and... Next, we're going to add water to thin it up a little bit. We will have to heat this before they go in our canning jars, and I'm going to show that to you next. But it calls for, I, I'm pretty sure, uh, I will double check in just a minute, uh, two and three-fourths cup of water. Now, this is all going to depend on your humidity, your altitude, honestly, and your preference. You do not want it super thick because you, you basically you can't, um can pureed anything you want it kind of liquidy but not too runny so i will try to give you an example of what it should look like you may use all the water you may not use all the water as you i will tell you when you cook it and start to heat it up for your canning process um it will thicken up on you so you may even add more water so right now i'm going to show you the jars this is my canner we're going to be water bath canning this. The jars that we are using are like little four ounce jelly jars. This is sufficient enough and this is basically what the uh, recipe calls for in the canning book. So this is what we're going to use. I am at the moment sterilizing my jars and make sure they're hot when my filling goes inside of them. So at this point I'm going to go ahead do some verification, bring my book back out, because I do not want to mess this up for anybody, not even for myself. So I'm going to take this and put it in my blender and get ready to blend it up, and I will be back with you. Okay, so the canning book states that it takes two and two-thirds cup of water. What we're going to do when we process this or puree this up we're going to take it and put it in a blender or food processor, preferably blender, y'all. The food processor just won't give you the consistency you're looking for. Adding water until a consistency of cooked oatmeal. And I will show that to you as we go along. Okay, so here's the consistency of the cooked oatmeal that they were talking about. It can probably be just a little bit more, not too much more though. Now at this point, we're going to take our mustard and we're going to bring it to a boil. Sorry about this lighting, it's playing on its own here, folks. Um, we're going to bring it to a boil, then drop it down to a simmer, stirring frequently and often. And for approximately five minutes uncovered, we're going to simmer this after we bring it up to a boil. Once I reach that point, I will bring you back into the stages of canning this. Oh, I did forget to mention, um, I so far used three-fourths of a cup. However, as I cook this, I know I'm going to be adding more, so I will let you know what the total for me was. And again, this may be different from everybody else. You may end up using the whole two, two cups and two-thirds. And then again, you might not. You just want to keep a good consistency with all of this. Okay, we are now at our boiling point. So we are going to take this. Now watch this because this will spit and sputter at you. Um, and make sure at this point that you're stirring it because you do not want this to burn at the bottom. So we're going to reduce our heat to simmer and we're going to simmer this for five minutes. And then we're going to ladle it in our jars. Okay, y'all, our mustard is ready for canning. And this is what it should be like. Nice, spreadable. This is smooth. It's, well, it's not going to be, again, I, I've mentioned this before, it's not going to be like commercial 
it still has some green to this but i'm i'm telling you i'd rather keep this than i would buy from a store number two uh i i brought up another factor that in the beginning this will be bold kind of spicy it's earthy and in time it starts to mellow out some so i found it to be good i actually used it the first day but as the time went on within the week it just became even greater and i am definitely sold so i didn't mind doing another batch to show you all how to do this so next we're going to start canning uh, up our jars and go from here i've got a small amount a jar with some um, vinegar in it so that i can wipe my jars I like to use a ladle also to make sure that my jars are not so uh, dirty and nasty. So I'll put it in there. And the head space on this is one quarter inch. I use this measuring stick and I'll find my one quarter inch mark, which is right here at this very last peak. So I need to have my contents inside my jar to this point here. I'm going to go ahead and show you how I do this. I take my jars, put in my funnel, and I will go ahead and scoop my mustard inside my jars to my one quarter inch head space. Now, on these little jars, it won't take much, so just be careful. And it is kind of thick, but not super thick, so. I am definitely not one who likes to waste, so I'll kind of clean off my edges as well. Especially when you get something this good. So I'll check my head space after this. Go ahead and use this side for your debubbling. You want to make sure all the bubbles are out of your jar. Check my headspace. Nice. Exactly one quarter inch. So now I'll take my paper towel. Damp it inside of my vinegar. Clean out the edge of my jars really good. Sometimes I tend to make a mess, so I have an extra one just to clean the bottom of my sticks off. I'll go ahead and finish cleaning this up. Because I did make a mess. I, I did the one thing I usually don't do, and that was to scrape it off on the jar. So Make sure this is good and cleaned. You want your lid to seal, so you want that rim exceptionally clean. Now I'll take my lid. Sometimes I'll heat my lids. They don't. They say you don't with these sure tights, but I don't know. I, I've had different variations of things that happen with them, so. I like to just seal them or uh, heat them up, not boil them, just heat them up to get that uh, edge of the seals heated and softened. I got one that, when you have a dented in here, it will not work. Just replace it. You're better off just to make sure you get a good seal. Like I said, these things canning these days, you only want to do finger tight. No more than that. 
when you're done just stick this in your canner and then fill up the rest of them and I will go ahead and fill up these jars I will be right back and show you our next step okay so surprisingly I in the recipe called for six of these four ounce jars I actually got eight and that's a plus I have this little bit extra I'm gonna just let this cool down and add it to what I have left in the refrigerator because it's getting low anyways so I'll definitely take this treat so what we have next I will turn you over to the canner okay at this point now we're going to turn our heat now you don't want a super boiling but I'm going to turn my heat to medium high. I am going to cover this and let this come to a full rolling boil. Once I do that, I will show you the next step. Okay, our canner is covered and now we're going to let this sit to a full rolling boil. I'm going to show you a treat, guys, too. Look, we've, we all know that living in this world of low carb, things can be pretty icky. In flavor sorry that's the only thing I could think of and that's just I'm I'm being nice this food some of the stuff I'm tasting I, I just don't even understand it but when I know me I know the fact of real flavor real food I'm gonna show you that life with us even in the situation that we're in now mind you a lot of you may be in the 20 range carbs a day I understand that we are just not we're between the 50 to 80 no more than a hundred and when I prepare my food I watch how I prepare it I pretty much understand I do a lot of research and I want to show you a treat I'm working on tonight this you all is pumpkin it is flavored with rosemary garlic drizzled with olive oil and sprinkled with salt and pepper and it has been oven roasted for about an hour. I am actually going to take this beautiful pumpkin and I am going to make us a nice gourmet pumpkin soup to go with salmon tonight. Don't let anyone tell you that our life has to be boring, that we have no flavor, because I will be the one to prove them wrong. I promise you. So experiment learn your food find out what you can and can't do with it it's amazing this food that we eat can give us so much and I choose to do the low carb because I can have this pumpkin the minerals the fiber the nutrients the flavor I can have that I allow myself that and it won't hurt us and I've still lost weight slowly but sometimes losing weight slowly is better and my husband still again is not getting sugar spikes so once this canner is finished up to the full rolling boil I'll come back and I'll tell you what our next step is okay we are at a full rolling boil so at this time we're gonna go ahead and keep it covered we're gonna set our timer for 10 minutes now this is based on my altitude you'll have to check on your altitude what it would be for you but for me I'm under a thousand so my altitude uh, tells me that for 10 minutes I will start my canning and after the 10 minutes I will turn my timer off um, not my timer my heat I will turn my heat off take the lid off and let it sit for five minutes after that I will take and pull my jars out set them aside and let them sit for 12 hours to cool seal do what they have to do the next day I'll label them and I will put them on my shelf that's all that's to it guys it's not that hard it was fairly simple water bath canning honestly is one of the fastest um, not so much um, you can set it and forget it pretty much when I'm fixing to go do my dishes but I also have, um, sitting here thinking, I think I'm going to give you a surprise video after this one. So keep an eye on it. Something a bit Christmassy for each and every one of you. Until then, much love from Parton's Heritage Homestead.